This is the Self-Aware Leader Podcast. Now your host, Jason Rigby. I want to talk to you guys today about one of the greatest superpowers that you can have as a leader, as an individual, as a human. We're going to talk about the power of listening. How to become a better leader through active listening. Now, we know that leadership is a skill set. And it's just practicing it over and over again, whether you practice it with your children, whether you practice it with your spouse or partner, whether you practice it with your employees, always having the opportunity to practice leadership will get you better and better and better at that skill. That's all it is. Everyone can be a leader. But one of the most essential yet often overlooked components is the ability to listen, but not just listen, to listen actively. Talk less, listen more. And I'm going, to t- I'm going to give you specific steps at the end of the podcast. I'm going to give you specific steps exactly how to listen actively. Nelson Mandela, he was the former South African president and anti-apartheid revolutionary. If you haven't ever heard of Nelson Mandela, some of you have, some of you haven't, you should look him up. Um, he had remarkable leadership qualities. And one of the most powerful traits was his ability to listen actively. Mandela would frequently meet with people from different backgrounds different races, different beliefs, and different countries. And he always, always ensured that their voices were heard and respected. Even if he disagreed with them, he would listen and pay attention. And you would see him in meetings and and you could watch. And even on YouTube, they have some of these where he, he was always pushing for unity, but always listening and understanding where they were coming from and why we could not create unity. What was the concern with this? And he brought understanding and cooperation among people that were so divided. That was kind of his expertise. He would bring people together because he was always had a sense of unity. And guess what? People wanted to talk to him. Every, every leader in the world had talked to Nelson Mandela. Why? Because they could sense him fostering unity, understanding, and cooperation. And this is a prime example for us to listen and create a more inclusive and collaborative environment. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. Another great leader was Franklin D. Roosevelt, our president. He had to work through the Great Depression and World War II. Imagine that. He had something called, and this is the old school days, he had something called the Roosevelt Roundtable. And it was very informal gatherings of advisors. And he had it where they were open and honest. He did not want yes men. He would still man things all the time. And he asked them to give him various perspectives. And he wanted people's opinions, even if he disagreed with it. And he would listen attentively, taking notes. And he would let them talk and give their viewpoint and not argue. And then from there, guess what? He took all this information, got it all together, collaborated it all together, and then made informed decisions. And he led the nation through, I believe, the two most challenging times, the Great Depression and World War II, all because of the Roosevelt Roundtable. So what are practical tips for active listening. Number one, be present. Focus on the speaker and avoid distractions. Give them your full attention. No screens on, no desktop screens in your office. Cut every single screen off. Not your phone. Cut your ringer off. Put it on airplane mode. Value your people so much and value conversation so much that you have zero distractions and you can be fully present. You know how many times I've had meetings where I've walked into a a leader and we're talking about something important and they're constantly distracted. Email being, they're answering emails, you have to wait for them. They get in a text, you wait for them. Oh, this is important, let me answer this real quick. Basically what you're saying is you're not important and a single email is way more important than you and I don't value your time as a person, as a human, as an employee, as a team member, as a fellow leader. I don't value your time. I feel like my time is the most important So I'm going to do my work and do what I need to do. And you can sit here and wait. How rude is that? You don't even realize you're doing it, do you? Be present. Number two, be patient. This isn't a five-minute meeting. Be patient. Allow that person to finish their thoughts before responding or asking questions. You should only respond and ask questions. The greatest question is, and what else? 80% they're talking, 20% you're talking. And you need to always be self-aware enough, self-aware leader, 
be self-aware enough to catch yourself. Say, no, 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 I'm talking too much. I need to ask a question. And let them talk. Ask open-ended questions. Encourage elaboration and deeper insights by asking questions that prompt further discussion. Stay macro. Let me give you an example. Let's do this one. Okay. Lisa has come in and she wanted to have a conversation with you. She scheduled a meeting um, because she wants to expand her department and go into a more creative endeavor. And this wasn't discussed about, but she's super excited about it. She hasn't had, you haven't had discussions with anyone else. And she kind of wants to just kind of brainstorm with you and spitball with you and have a conversation about what it's going to look like and kind of lay it out for you. And you can tell she's really excited and you can tell she's really prepared. This is a perfect time to just listen. She has so much information to give you. She's been studying this for hours and hours on end. She is super excited. She probably has notes or presentation or whatever. This is your time to listen and understand her excitement, to value her excitement, to value her creativity, to value her as a person, and to be pumped up about where she wants to go. You may not be too hip on the idea. Give, she will work extra to make sure that you're like, well, you know, right now, I don't think you, you just, you're just cutting her legs off when you say that. Ask her, say, hey, with the current budget restrictions, with what we're going on now, this is, this is an idea that you've created. How can we implement this and it not take any more? I mean, this works in a scenario. How can we implement this, not take any more time or take something else from the budget and fix this to how can we do this? in a creative way that allows you, Lisa, to be able to do this. Because you seem passionate about this, and I trust you, and I want you to go in this direction with your team. But you can ask her, like, what does it look like? How does this look like practically? What happens with this, this, and this if we do this? And those will come to you. So the, take your statements, be self-aware enough to the, the statement that you're wanting to say, ask the question on it. Guaranteed you'll see a uh, a hundred times, thousand times better response, and your employees will be a hundred percent more pumped up, excited, and they'll be working in what they want to do. Reflect and paraphrase. Show that you understand and value the speaker's perspective by summarizing their key points and asking for clarification. So, so you you want to take the team and you want to do this creatively and this 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 Lisa. So this is what you're telling me. Um, I just need some clarification on how much time this is going to take to implement and what the budget's going to be like on it. So you may say, well, you know, th this is kind of a rough draft. I just came up with that. I haven't really thought about that. Well, let's schedule another meeting, Lisa, and let's go over that. Let's kind of get the fine points, the details down, gain some clarity on it, and see how extensive this is going to take. Is this something that we need to, you know, put a lot of resources to or not? Um, you know, and then let her know your constraints. Say, hey, you know, the budget's capped out. We'd have to kind of get rid of a few things um, to be able to implement this. I, I can be creative and you can too, but let's work together on this so that we can get this because you're excited about it and I, I want you to run with this. Avoid interrupting. Guys, I see this all the time with leaders. Basically saying what you're saying is not important and what I have to say, I have to get out right now. Be self-aware enough that when you want to interrupt that you can catch it in your head and say, I'm not, value. just say this, I'm not valuing this person enough. I need to listen. I'm going to listen and I'm going to value this person. I love this person. They're a great employee. I want to listen. Your thoughts are not that important. Oh, yeah. Don't be a narcissistic leader. Great leaders understand the importance of listening actively and genuinely. People can tell right off the bat. There's something that we have in us through evolutionary psychology and millions of years that we can tell when somebody's listening and when they're being genuine. Prioritize the practice of talking less and listening more. Foster a culture of collaboration, innovation, and respect. You model this to your leaders, guess what? They and your employees, they will do the same to others. Look at Nelson Mandela. Look at Franklin D. Roosevelt. Even 3M, you know, the guys that made post-its, but they make a ton of stuff. Look how much stuff 3M. They have this in their DNA. This is how these new products at 3M come up, post-it notes and everything else, because of collaboration, because they encourage their employees to share ideas. They encourage their employees to develop and go out on a limb groundbreaking products. Scotch tape was invented this way, guys. Post-it notes. 
from this. Think about that. By allowing their employees to be creative and listening, active listening. This is the cornerstone of effective leadership. Aspiring, if you're an aspiring leader, if you're a young leader, you can try this at home. Actively listen to your kids. Actively listen to your partner. Show respect. Active listening in your daily interactions, I guarantee you will change your team and your organization. Thank you for tuning in to the Self-Aware Leader Podcast with host Jason Rigby. We hope this episode has inspired you to unleash your full potential and embrace your inner leadership. By expanding your consciousness, you can transform your mind, body, and soul and become the remarkable leader you were always meant to be. If you found this episode valuable, please share it with your loved ones and help us expand our community. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to having you join us again on the Self-Aware Leader Podcast.